Welcome to part two of my minor seventh, minor sixth chord family lesson. This lesson will talk a little bit about chord melody and also about why those transitions sound so good. Uh, so in chord melody, you probably, if you played around with this, you probably actually may have come up with a trying to write a song or even. Because the tune just sort of suggests itself. And in chord melody, part of the idea is you want to play the chord, but have the melody note be the highest note in that chord. And so, for example, you know, like what I just did. Anyway, let's take a simple example, like uh, we're going to harmonize Twinkle Twinkle. So it's just... And so that's we're going to play our C6. It's going to be a C6, and then it's going to go... Well, this is a D minor 7, but it's also an F6. So we're going to use that for our 4, F6. And then we're going to use a G9 for our 5. And this is also a G9. I think we'll prefer this one. So, let's just do that. Now the next note here is going to be the same chord, so what's this chord up there? With this note in the melody, you see? So I'm, I'm going to just use this shape up here. Now I want to go to my F6 to get this note. So here's F6, 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 F6. So we're going to go. Now you could also, there's another shape that has that same note in the melody that we've learned. And that's this shape. Instead of doing this one, we're going to drop that by a half step. And that actually sounds pretty good too, so let's try that one. It's all just a matter of preference. Maybe you prefer it to sound like... Or... Then we're going to go back and we're going to step down F6. So th this is the next F6. Back to our this shape. Then we put in the fifth. See how that works? And every single one of those was one of our eight shapes from the minor six, minor seventh family. Anyway, that's a simple chord melody example. Now let's talk a little bit about why these transitions sound so cool. So what's happening in this one? We're just changing a one note by a half step and it totally changes the flavor of that chord. Well, one way to look at it is we're going from a minor seventh to its fourth. It's 4749 flavor. And so you know you can almost always go up, move a chord up by a fourth and it's going to sound good. That's one way to look at it. And so if that's the case, then the next chord logically might be your G. A, D. But you could also look at it, what that really is, well not really, but another way to look at it is what they call the 2 minor 5 7 progression. And it's all over jazz, uh, 2 5 1 is what they do. So if we start on the G, we start in jazz almost any, instead of using a major G, we use the G6. So here's our G6. And then 
the two minor is our A minor, and then this becomes our five, back to the G. So if we, if we do that, well, let's move this up. This is also our G6. So that's part of why that one's, it's got two different ways and I'm sure there's more music theory about why that kind of works. And you know, you can take this one and add some other chord. You just need, you can riff on this forever. And then just throw in some other chord and just pick one. It's like pick it at random almost. You know. Uh, if it sounds good, you know, you just came up with a progression. If it doesn't, well, go to something else. Now the other transition that we did was the minor 7th to the minor 7th flat 5th. And that one is almost an even cooler sound, I think. And why is that? Well, if we think of this as a C6, and think of this as a ninth chord, what ninth chord is that? Well, here's our F7, so that's an F9. So we're basically going from the C to its fourth 7-9 flavor. Well, what is that? That's the blues. That's the backbone of the blues, that transition right there. Anyway, just a few ideas uh, that you can play around with here. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do and I suggest just play around with those shapes and randomly go from one shape to another is one way to do it. But you know, this kind of stuff also works in, if by doing chromatic shifts. So here I, I start here, let's move down one and do the same thing. Uh, or, you know, anyway, um, and like I say, play around with these shapes. Just play around with them and see what you come up with. Okay, and throw in a diminished chord here and there, that helps. Well, that one wasn't so good, but you get the idea. Play around with it. You know when you're doing these transitions, you're going from a one to a four a lot of times, which is kind of reverse cycle of fifths. And, you know, even move up, to move the whole thing up by a fifth. Well, you can see the possibilities really are endless, but that, that should give you a good start. Anyway, I uh, hope it's been useful and have fun.